Thank you, Mehmet. We'll do. Okay, hi everybody. So today we're going to talk about uh, Cloud Apps, which is a brand new initiative that was just launched uh, last month. Um, and so I have a short amount of time, so I thought it would be a great idea if I could see how quickly I could explain to you the idea behind Cloud Apps, the justification, why you would build a Cloud App, uh, demo how to get started with the Cloud App, and then show you next steps all within the short amount of time that I have today. And if so, then we've done a good job of making it easy to get started. So we'll see at the end if I've succeeded. You know, that I kind of opened with this slide updated on most presentations that I give, mostly because I'm very proud of the work and the investment that we do here on the Xaver side and also the amazing work um, that you all in the developer community do as evidenced by the great presentations that we've seen today and the great registration and turnout that we have uh, for Developers Day. Uh, and so if we're looking at the open platform in general, you know, 50 different standards supported by our products, 70 apps available for download on the App Center, uh, five or even now up to six million uh, REST API calls made every single day, 200 REST APIs available. Uh, something we introduced in the last year or two was webhooks. So last month there were 19 million webhooks sent from Alma to various institutions, which of course saves those institutions that need to do polling. And so all that is great. So we see the amazing ingenuity of the work that you're doing in the developer community. Um, and that's evidenced by the numbers and the, and the adoption of the open platform. And last year when we introduced the App Center and said, here, we want to have one place where you can share some of this work and have a URL that you can share with your use with, with, with various developers. And so, um, you know, as Christina said in the first presentation, first thing you have to do is check and do a Google search or search and developer network and see if someone else has the same problem and tackle the same issue. But we knew then that that was only the beginning because uh, sharing of, of work and applications, there are still some barriers. Um, you know, you have to have a, a runtime environment or API keys if you're gonna run someone else's app. Um, if you're gonna host your application, so that's a certain amount of, a certain burden on the developer to host and maintain the application. Um, if you have a standalone app, so, you know, it may not be integrated with the, with the experience of Alma, whatever the underlying Xlibris product is. Uh, and so, you know, we do have great adoption, but we think that we can go further and make it and make it even better. And so that's the idea behind um, behind Cloud Apps. The Cloud Apps is an open framework, um, brand new. We worked on it with a uh, with a focus group made up of of some institutions who represented on this Developers Day um, over the past year. And the idea behind Cloud Apps is that the apps that you write as a developer can then be hosted and can be run inside of, uh, inside of the Xlibris Higher Ed Cloud Platform, so inside of Alma. I'll say Alma a bunch on this during this session, but uh, Cloud Apps can be written to, be, to integrate with, with anything that runs on the platform. So that would be Alma, that would be the Primo V back, off, back office, that would be the Explorer back office, Leganto, um, Rapido coming out next year. So any of the any of the Xlibris products which which run on the on the platform, uh, cloud apps can be written to integrate with them. And so the idea is we're trying to allow libraries to improve efficiency, allowing you to develop apps which improve the efficiency of your staff, and also allow it to be done in an agile way. Okay, so you can develop apps quickly. Uh, you can deploy those apps. You can update those apps all without relying on uh, on the updating of the underlying product. So I don't have to wait until Alma's updated or not wait for a feature release. It allows you to respond in an agile way. So what does that mean? So cloud apps can be uh, searched, installed, and are launched within Alma by an end user. Okay, so now if I'm an end user, a staff user, I'm not a developer, I can go into Alma and I can search, or I can go into Google, or I can go into the, the App Center and search for an app which fills the need that I'm looking for. And then I can go into Alma and install that app directly within my Alma interface. So of course, that's the benefit for an end user, right? They don't have to download and install uh, an application, get an API key, whatever else they might have to do. Cloud apps can respond to the context of the user session. Okay, so now your staff, your user is in an integrated environment. They're doing some kind of work within, uh, within Alma. 
And the cloud app can respond, can be aware of what screen is open and can offer functionality based on the, uh, the type of objects or the actual um, objects that are open in, in Alma. And then, you know, cloud apps run within, within the Xavier's cloud platform. So there's no API key um, required. API calls that are made from the cloud, from cloud apps run within the context of the logged in user. So you don't have to give users special permissions for cloud apps. If they have permissions to do the underlying API calls within Alma, then you can do it from your, they can, they can perform those same actions from the cloud app as well. So it lowers the barrier for being able to share apps and reuse apps among users within an institution and also between institutions. So cloud apps have benefits for institutions. So institutions can offer time-saving apps, can extend the functionality of Alma, um, and cloud apps have you know, certain governance policies. So an institution can decide, I want to enable cloud apps, I want to limit it to certain cloud apps so certain ones can't be installed, or only a white list of an allowed list of cloud apps can be installed. Uh, end users, staff users can enjoy new functionality and streamline workflows, with, and they don't, it's integrated, they don't have to, as I said, download or install or get an API key or anything like that. And of course, most importantly for us on this, in this session is developers. So now we as developers can, can write innovative apps, can deliver them to our own institution, can share them with other institutions, and we don't have to be bothered with, with hosting or managing the runtime uh, environment. All that is handled on the Xlibris side. What types of apps can be built with cloud apps? What types of use cases are we talking about here? So we've seen so far in the apps that have been released, and I'll, I'll uh, talk about what apps those are in a moment, we've seen basically three categories of apps, three different kinds of apps. So one is adding new functionality. So this Alma or whatever the product is did not support this. It's important for us. We want to add that functionality so you can write a cloud app that adds new functionality. A second type is productivity. There might be a certain workflow which is less than ideal in Alma or which is specific to my institution. And so therefore I can, I can design a very streamlined app and only provide the options that are important for the workflow that my staff users uh, are using. And then finally, there are apps which provide integration. So they can reach out into other systems and pull in data and either enrich the data that's being displayed in Alma or update data in external systems. So you can integrate with uh, with other systems. These are three different types of apps that we've seen being built so far. And as I said, cloud apps were live as of last month, which is very exciting. And so far, we already have 11 cloud apps which are available uh, today that can be installed and played with. Um, and there are all sorts of types. There are ones that add new functionality. There's ones that uh, provide integrations, uh, ones that provide, you know, streamlined workflows. And so I'll show you afterwards how you can find those and see what's being done. But what I'd like to do now is to go ahead and hop out of this presentation. I'd like to bring up my command line and let's go ahead and get started uh, building our first cloud app. We're gonna do this live now together. And of course, everything I'm showing you here, I'll point you afterwards to the documentation where you can see this. You don't have to worry about um, about writing down everything that I'm showing you right now. So when you get started with a development environment, this is developing cloud apps, of course, and you just don't need to do any of this. To develop a cloud app, you're going to download and install a CLI, a command line interface, and I've already done that. Once I do that, I have a, a command line tool called ECA, Xlibris Cloud Apps. So first I'm just gonna make a directory called igloo uh, demo. I'm gonna CD into that directory. And then I'm going to run my ECA, which is Xeverse Cloud Apps, init. So I'm going to initialize this directory. And I'm going to give it a name, igloo demo. I'm going to give it a description. This is my demo. I'm going to give it an environment URL. So I'm going to give it my, my sandbox environment. And then I have to give it a port to run on locally. Uh, and what it did is it created a whole bunch of files and directories for me. I'm going to go ahead and open that up in Visual Studio Code, just so we can take a look at that in a minute. And then I'm going to write ECA start. So now I'm going to go ahead and start that up. So what's happening now? So it's going to do an NPM install and pull in a whole bunch of dependencies, which is great. Um, and what's happening is it's going to set up a local proxy. So cloud apps are essentially, they're not essentially, are Angular apps. So that means they're HTML, CSS, JavaScript apps. 
and the development experience is local. So I'm going to develop my app locally. When I'm finished developing it, of course, I'm going to publish it and go through the process of making it available within, um, within Alma for all of my users and users from other institutions to use as well. But now we're focusing on the development experience. So I'm going to install this, um, this development environment. It's a proxy. So everything, so my Alma is actually going to be whatever Alma environment I pointed to. So that might be my sandbox or my production environment. And uh, when I did that in it, it created this a small uh, file here with a, a config file with those values that I put in, a manifest file, which just has some information about my cloud app, and then the app itself. So this starts to look, for those of you who are familiar with Angular, this starts to look more like an Angular app uh, with a component, a module, and then my, my main component here. So all that is my app running locally, and then my Elm environment is going to be proxied through, um, through my, my command line interface, so that it gives me this great development experience where Alma is running remotely and my app is running locally so I can develop it just like I would um, any, other, any other Angular app. So the first time it's doing it, it's going to go and install those dependencies. It's going to start up my server. And once that happens, I'm going to log in to my uh, Alma environment. Uh, and then, here we are with my Alma environment. I'm gonna log into my Alma environment with my credentials from my sandbox, because remember, this is pointing to my sandbox. And then I'm going to go in and see the actual scaffolding app that was created. So that India created a scaffolding, which gets me started um, developing my, my app locally. And so this is the Alma new layout. For those of you who are uh, from who have seen this before, this is the new layout. And of course, the cloud apps work in the new layout. Um, and so I have enabled uh, cloud apps. And so I have a little cloud app icon here. And here's my Igloo demo. This one is running locally. So if I click on it, I'm bringing up my app here. And let's just prove that I'm running locally so I can hop over into Visual Studio Code. I can click on my main component. Here's my welcome. I can say welcome to my Igloo demo. I'll save that. And then just like a regular Angular app, my app refreshes instantly. And here's my new, my new materials. I'm gonna pin this on the side. Let's do a search here for uh, history. And so uh, we see that, you know, I did a search here within Alma and over here, my app has responded. So this is a list of entities which are uh, open on the screen right now. So my app is aware of what's going on inside of Alma. And this is a list of entities. These are all NMS records, which is great. Um, I can go down here into items and then my app updates and it says, oh, now I see that you're on an item record. I can go even further down to the item editor. Again, my app knows that I'm on an item editor and my app saw, oh, you know what? There's one record here. So I'm gonna call the actual full API. I'm gonna show you the entire API for that underlying item. Let's just go ahead and make a quick update here to chronology. I'll just add a year here and I'll go ahead and click update. And now my app is going to call an API inside of Alma to update uh, that, that entity, that item, and you can see here my chronology was, was updated as well. So my app has been, uh, is aware of what's going on in the Alma screen. I can call uh, APIs within Alma, and if you also notice, my app actually refreshed the item editor. So I, I updated this data inside of Alma, and my app refreshed it. Uh, I said to Alma, please go and refresh your screen. Okay, so that is, that is within six minutes we were able to uh, create a new application, install the dependencies, get the proxy up and running, uh, make a little change in it, and see how the scaffolding uh, works inside, inside of Alma. So that's very quickly getting started with, um, with cloud apps. Let's go and take a look at where you go from here, right? Because that's great for a quick demo, uh, but what do we, how do we get started? How do we move forward from here? So there's a new tab up here within the developer network called Cloud Apps. You can click on that. And the documentation on the uh, developer network is broken up into three sections. So there's a getting started guide. So that's more or less what we saw now. It's the prerequisites, it's installing the CLI, it's doing an initialization. So all of that is in the getting started guide. Then we have documentation, and within the documentation, we have more in information about that CLI that I showed you with init and start and some other commands there as well. A section on how to publish cloud apps. So that's great. I have my own, my, my own 
cloud app. How do I get it into Alma, right? So if I, as an end user, am inside of Alma, I want it to appear here in this list, list of available apps. So I've got uh, a, a, an application written by our colleagues at Technion. So that's, that's here to interact with their Lipstick uh, app and service. Um, we'll have an app here to easily collect, uh, to update e-collections in bulk, uh, to bring in availability from HattyTrust. So a whole bunch of apps here, and I want to get my app into that list so that my users and others can install it on their environment. So that's this section here. More information about the manifest and how you can give metadata about your app. The actual underlying API is this tab here. So again, how do I call APIs within Alma? How do I refresh the page in Alma? How do I know what entities are being displayed in Alma? So all that's described here in this Cloud Apps API. And then finally, there's a style guide. We want, we want to strive that the apps at least maintain some sort of consistency in terms of how they look so that our end users are not you know, jarred when they move from app to app. So there's a style guide here uh, to help us with that. And then the last section is tutorials. And this may be uh, the most important section for us because it actually goes through um, whatever that is, 12, 14 use cases um, and shows how to uh, implement or one way to implement those use cases inside of Cloud Apps. So even if you're not uh, an expert Angular uh, developer, um, we think it is um, uh, very, very doable to get started, to work through these tutorials. There are a whole bunch of use cases, very common things that you want to do inside of Alma, inside of Cloud Apps, whether it's reaching out to external data sources and pulling in data, working bibliographic records, making API requests in parallel, um, there's a setting service, so you can have users uh, save their own personal settings or a configuration service so that uh, an institution can save configuration settings for a cloud app, like URLs or usernames or those types of things. Um, so all of those are tutorials here within the tutorial section. And we also have a tutorial app that comes along with it. So here's an, an app, which is Cloud App Tutorial Cloud App, which is uh, all the code behind um, behind these tutorials are available here. So these are great demos, great ways for you to be able to take a look at some use cases which might interest you. So just going to hop back over for the last slide to my presentation. Uh, we saw the demo of how to get started with Cloud Apps. Uh, we saw Cloud Apps on the developer network, um, all those sections about getting started, the, in the detailed documentation, and all those tutorials. Um, and so what's next? So we've got a whole bunch of links out here, and these are in the presentation um, that is shared on the proposal space. So some marketing information about it, a press release, a blog. Um, if you are an administrator and you wanna be able to enable cloud apps for your institution, there's a link to the documentation on the Knowledge Center about how to enable cloud apps for your environment. And then finally, the documentation link in the developer network, which, uh, which we just saw now. So really the tip of the iceberg, we're very excited about this new uh, framework. We think you can open up a whole new uh, gamut of apps and integrations that you, the developer community, um, are able to, uh, to work through. Um, we're happy to work with you to answer any questions. There's a, a dedicated section within the forum on the developer network. So come on, you can ask some questions there if you run into any problems. Um, and we'll have somebody answer you in the forum of the developer network. There's a forum just for cloud apps. Uh, we think this really opens up a lot of opportunities and we can't wait to see uh, what you're going to build with them. So that's what I had to share with you today. Mehmet, can I answer some questions? Sure, please. There are. Thank you, Josh. Okay. So There's a question about how you uh, enable cloud apps. If you've enabled the new layout, but you can't see the cloud app icon. So that's the link to the documentation. There's actually uh, uh, an Alma admin has to enable cloud apps. Um, in your sandbox environment and then your production environment separately. Um, so that's in the documentation link, which I will uh, add here. It's also in the presentation. Uh, there's a question about, is there a cost to cloud apps? And the answer is no, it's a part of the platform. Um, so everyone is uh, welcome to use cloud apps at no additional cost. In addition, there, the API calls that are made from cloud apps do not count as a part of your threshold. So if a user is making API calls through the cloud app, that's considered like almost like the UI usage and not counted as part of the threshold. So there's no, uh, there's no cost involved. Um, there's a question about which version of Angular. This is Angular uh, 9. 
the one before the latest version, not Angular JS, not the old uh, Angular one. Um, there's a question about whether or not cloud apps can update the metadata editor in the same way that we showed for the item editor. So cloud apps can update metadata, um, meaning you can you have access to the Google Graphic APIs and you can work with XML in order to update an actual mark record. Uh, at the moment, the cloud app cannot talk to the new metadata editor. Um, we have to do some enabling there, but that's planned for the coming months. So you will be able to do to be able to see what record um, you're, you're looking at in the MD editor and then also refresh the MD editor just like you can from the other screen. So that's coming in the coming months. Um, there's a question about uh, resource sharing, borrowing requests. Uh, are there, um, uh, do those show up in cloud apps as the page entities that I showed you in that little box, are they updated? So in order to do that hook, we had to um, do a little bit of glue there to make the Alma screens talk to the cloud apps. We did that, we did that for about 70 screens um, uh, based on feedback from the, uh, from the focus group. So there might be some screens that, that are, inter are interest to you, which are not, are not currently activated. Don't worry, that's not a bug. It's not that it's not working for your screen. If you see items, but not some other entity, uh, drop us a line in the forum and we will uh, be happy to add that. Uh, it's not a lot of work on our side, so we can generally add that within you know, the next one or two Alma releases. Um, so please let us know. I don't know particularly about resource sharing borrowing, but if that's not working for you, please do uh, post in the forum and we will take a look at that. Um, and then there's a question about, um, will there be an ability to uh, restrict the rights of cloud apps? Um, so right now, uh, cloud apps are, use the underlying capabilities or permissions of the logged in user. So if a logged in user can view user details or item details or bibliographic data, then they'll be able to do so um, in the cloud app as well. We did get some uh, feedback that, that some institutions would like to be able to limit cloud apps by role to be able to say, you need a certain role to open this, um, this cloud app. In addition to all the permissions, obviously you can't use a cloud app to, uh, to bypass your permissions, um, but there has been an interest in saying that's all well and good, but I want to limit it to a certain role. So we're, we're considering how that can be done. Um, and uh, if there's a way to do that, you know, in a way that makes sense and doesn't put too big a burden on the developer. So definitely something that we're looking at. Um, but, but now there is, again, I want to, there's no way for a user to bypass their, their permissions. They can't do something in cloud apps that they wouldn't be able to do using the API. Okay. Thank you, Josh. Um, uh, are there any other questions for Josh? <laughs> <laughs> because he's here. Uh, I know he's, he's very approachable, uh, but still, I mean, if you have him at your hand, then, then he should uh, make use of it. Huh? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and, and, and ask. Oh, yeah. um, Josh, thank you for the, seeing the demo of that was really great. Um, it wasn't clear, is there testing or approval that goes for the cloud apps or do we just put it out there? So that's, uh, that's a good question. So in the publishing section of the documentation that I uh, pointed out, so go to cloud apps and then uh, uh, documentation, there's a page on how to publish. So that kind of describes the, the publishing procedure. Um, uh, I'll just say briefly that uh, the way it works is that the, you add an app within the app center. So you go to the developer network and just like you can add a blog post, you can add an app and then you mark it as a cloud app. And what that does is it goes to uh, manual review for the first time where we're not, um, you know, we're not doing tremendous testing. We're not testing all the functionality, but we're more or less making sure that it does what it says it's going to do, that there's enough document, that there's at least a, a link to where to get help, that it follows all the guidelines um, that, that are supposed to be followed. We install it locally, we do a smoke test of it, um, and then that gets, and then once it gets approved, there may be some back and forth between our team and the developer. Once it gets approved, then it gets published automatically based on a GitHub release. Again, I won't go into details now, but based on, on a GitHub release, it's described there in that doc. Uh, and then any further updates, you basically just make a new release in GitHub and, uh, and it gets put, pushed off or, uh, automatically. And so from that point on, uh, it just gets pushed out automatically. So you can you know, do a change. I mentioned that agile, you can make a change, push it out there and it goes out um, quickly. There are a few exceptions, like for example, 
again, without getting too much detail now, the Cloud app requires you to declare which external resources you're using. So you can't go out to any random URL. You have to say explicitly, I want to use these URLs. So if that list of URLs changes, we do another review just to make sure that, that the, the URLs are, are normal, acceptable uh, places. Um, uh, so we do do, you know, there is some amount of testing and we also do a security scan to make sure the apps aren't using any libraries that have uh, critical issues in them. So if so, then, then that will fail and we're going to ask the developer to update those, those dependencies. Um, so those are the types of things that we're doing. Great. Uh, Thank you for all that detail. I appreciate it. Other questions have come in uh, as your list of screens that are integrated with, um, with cloud apps. Um, that's, that, that's actually a good question, a good point. You know, I did mention there are 70 screens. I don't think that I, we have a list of those except for internal, but I'll see if there's a way that we can, uh, we can make that, that list external. Um, but again, the easiest thing to do is, is within that, even within that scaffolding, so when you go and create a new Alma app, you can um, you know, navigate around Alma and you'll see the, 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 the cloud app updating with all of the messages that it's getting from, from Alma. So um, we shouldn't have to wait for that, but we can check and see if, if we can make a list like that public. Um, the question was about the allowed lists and, and, and denied lists on the institutional level. So an institution administrator can say, I, I want to, uh, to allow all cloud apps. I want to allow all cloud apps except these. I want to allow only these cloud apps. So any of those options are available. All, all except or, or only these. Um, and then there's a question about, about how, um, how apps are updated and, and documentation. So again, these are community apps. So the documentation is, um, is, you know, is up to the, to the developer. Um, some of the, we do have within cloud app, the cloud app framework, the ability to specify a help URL. And then within, uh, within Alma, you can click on the app and click on a help. And that brings you to that URL. Um, and we will make sure that that URL is populated, but again, the developer needs to write, um, or make that, that, uh, or make that documentation available. We will we do, we will mark an Alma when an app has been updated, just so you know. Oh, by the way, this app has been updated. Um, so you might want to, uh, you know, take a look at what the release notes were for that GitHub version, because every app update refers to a GitHub version. So whatever the developer puts in there is what can be displayed. Uh, apps are per user, so users can install apps, and it, uh, the list of installed apps is, is just for that user. And also, I mentioned the settings service, so they have the ability to save um, settings specific to that user. That's, that's per user as well. Uh, and, and then the, the last question I see here is, is I think cloud apps work for Aleph. Uh, that, would be, that would be a treat, but uh, and unfortunately, cloud apps are, are for Alma and then also other um, uh, platform products in the future. So again, Explorer, Leganto, Primo V back office, um, uh, Rapido, et cetera. Okay. Thank you for the extra time, Emmett. No problem.